1.21 is here, the trial update. And as always, I am a couple of days late. Still, I am very excited for one specific feature. You probably all know what it is, but in case you don't, it is not the tough variants, it is not the new copper variants, not the trial chamber stuff, and not even the breeze. All of those things are pretty good, guys, but hear me out. The auto crafter. I'm very excited about this, guys, and I'm sure most of you will have already played with the with the crafter block. Um, I have already for several months because the snapshots came out early with the, with the crafter block. Um, but if you haven't, it's a pretty cool block. It's basically a crafting table that is automatic. Um, and it has this very industrial cool look. Um, even it, at its bottom, it has a very cool look. Um, and you can place it in several orientations. So if you want a floor made out of the bottom side, I think you can do it somehow. Maybe. Nope. <laughs> Apparently you cannot get the bottom side up, but you can get them get it in on the walls and also on the ceiling. Anyways, the looks are the least cool thing about these crafter blocks. Because as I said, they are automatic, so you can lock slots, you can uh, input stuff or ingredients with droppers and hoppers and they get into one of those lots of the crafter and actually if you keep inputting items into it they will go into the next slot so they won't fill the the first lot again until all of the other available slots are full um so if we input another oh we have some another block there is gonna go into the third one and then now that all of the available slots are covered we go back to slot one so that's pretty cool that we don't have anything in the game like that yet until the crafter of course and uh, yeah the crafter will also craft stuff whenever we give it a redstone pulse so it's pretty cool it even has this little animation when it gets powered so it's pretty cool so yeah basically every single item in the game we can now automate its crafting uh, process and you know how I love doing redstone. Well, redstone requires one very annoying task, and that is crafting every single component over and over, sometimes thousands of them, or thousands of the single one for a single contraption. So with this auto crafter, we're gonna save a lot of time and we're gonna save a lot of uh, troubles because there are recipes that are quite a hassle to, to craft namely the dispenser <laughs> because you need bows and bows are non-stackable items and yeah when you're crafting dispensers you have to hold the bows in your inventory and each of them occupies one slot so it, it gets it gets annoying with the crafter block never again goodbye having to craft bows manually and then putting them into the crafting recipe so for this video I decided to choose 15 components, 15 redstone components, the ones that I use the most, and I designed a specific crafting system for each of them. Now I am interested on which components you use the most guys, so if it's if they're different than this ones, let me know down in the comments. But anyways, the, the components that I choose is the redstone torch, however the lever uh, recipe is pretty similar, so um, if we can use the same contraption for both. We have the repeater, the comparator, the actually it's the target blocks, but the the uh, redstone lamps are or well, share the same recipe. Just instead of hay bales, we use glowstone. So both of them. Uh, the copper bulb because I don't use it much, but it's just because it wasn't in the game before. But now that it's in the game, I'm probably gonna use it a lot more. The pistons. Uh, dispensers, which is probably my favorite one because I really need this. <laughs> we have droppers, of course. The crafter, because it's a new block and we're gonna be using it a lot from now on. Uh, hoppers, one of the most used. Observers, also one of the most used. Node blocks. And then I chose three of the rails. So the normal rails, the uh, detector rails, and the powered rails. These are the three most used rails, at least for me. 
But of course we also have the activator rails. I just decided on not doing one uh, one of these contraptions for the activator rails because the recipe is a pain. And I could have figured it out, of course. Uh, actually, it would be pretty similar to this one. We just have to adjust some things. However, instead of using three crafters, for example, we would be needing six or a system to divide the sticks, and that would have been that would have got, gotten messy. So for this video, I just decided on these 15 prototypes, and I say prototypes because I don't have my usual mods to test stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna include the world download, not even the Lightmatica schematic because I don't have Lightmatica yet. And you can tell me if they work for you guys because I know they work. I've been I've been using them and they're they're pretty useful. However, I do have my doubts for some of them. For example, these ones that have the slope rail here. Uh, I don't know if they're locational or directional. Um. But yeah, let me know down in the comments if you have any problems and detail them because I'm very curious. Um, for now, I'm, I'm gonna just show you this 15 and also how to craft every single component in the game as well. Uh, right now, I don't want to focus on each of them because the video will would take ages otherwise. Uh, so I, I decided to only focus on three of them and the rest of them are pretty similar. So I'm sure you can figure it out by yourself. And if you have doubts or questions, of course, I'm available also in the comments. So no worries there. Alright, so for the first contraption that I want to show you guys, I decided to choose the Pistons one. Because it's a very interesting contraption. It uses so many little mechanics. And it works amazingly, as you can see. We can craft Pistons reliably and get all of them into this barrel down here. Oh, that's from previous tests. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, we are crafting pistons and the crafter never runs out of items. If you notice here on the oak planks, they never go below 30. Uh, if you notice on the cobblestone, they never go below 63 and same for the iron and red, iron ingots and redstone dust. So enough. Now you may notice that the pistons are crafted relatively quickly. I think actually one piston every half a hopper speed. Hopper speed is basically just the, the speed that a hopper uh, takes to transport one item from inside of it to another container. Um, which is in total eight game things, by the way. How are we modulating the speed on these crafters? We are using the same clock for each and every single one of these contraptions. Now this is a, a four game tick clock. We're using two observers and two solid blocks and two uh, powerable blocks, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how to call them. Uh, in some cases, for example, instead of solid block and, and the no block, we're using, for example, rails um, or even the crafter itself or some droppers to cause the update instead of node blocks. So this uh, eight, I mean four game ticks clock is half hopper speed. As I said, hopper speed is eight game ticks. Why do we need half hopper speed? Because for example, for this crafter, we need four cobblestone in each cycle to craft a piston. And we don't want to wait uh, 32 game ticks for all the cobblestone to get in here. It would be very slow. So instead, what we do is increase the speed and we use half hopper speed. So in the time that it would take an iron ingot to get in here, because that's normal hopper speed, we would get two cobblestone in here. How? Well, we can accelerate the, the speed of the hoppers, but we can power droppers very fast, as you can see. So what's, that's what we were doing. Instead of inputting the cobblestone with hoppers, as for the iron and the redstone, we are inputting the cobblestone with a dropper powered at double hopper speed. So instead of waiting the 32 game ticks, we are waiting 16 game ticks for the cobblestone to get in here, the full cobblestone. Uh, same happens for the oak planks, for example. Instead of waiting um, that 8 times 3, 24 ticks for the planks to get here, we are powering 3 times very fastly in double hopper speed. 
the crafter back there. Now, why do we use the couples? Well, we are working on multiples of two. Like for example, one hopper speed, one hopper speed, that times two, it's two hopper speed or double hopper speed as we have the cobblestone. But we would need to multiply by three and divide by two, I think. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but we have to input three oak planks instead of four or two. So that basically breaks the symmetry of the, of the input speed. Uh, and the way we handle it is basically we look for a multiple of three and a multiple of two or four in this case, because we also factor in that these oak logs output four planks instead of two. So four times three, that's 12. So we basically wait for these oak planks to deplete 12 times. So 12 oak planks that we get out of this, out of here, that means four on each of these slots. Once that happens, which happens every four times that we, no, yeah, every four times that we power this crafter, uh, once that happens, we power three times this crafter and we get the 12 oak plants back into this crafter. A lot of mad. Oh, a lot of mad. I know, guys. So sorry about that, but it's, it is what it is. <laughs> so, yeah, we are counting those four times using copper bulbs. Copper bulbs act as a T flip flop. So if we power, power it once, it stays on. If, it, if we power it again, it turns off. That means every two pulses, we get a pulse. Every two pulses. If we add another one here, you'll see one, two, we get a pulse, but that one turns off. So one, two, we get a pulse of that one. So every four, one, two, three, four we get a pulse on that one. So that's how we count the four triggers of the trapdoor with these copper bulbs. And then every four times we are using this triple pulse generator, which is very, very simple. We are just using a piston, a stick piston, and two uh, observers facing the same way. And if we were to place a dropper with items in it, inside of it, if we power this uh, piston once, we get two items, and when we retract it, we get the third. So it's a pretty simple uh, triple pulse generator. Now for the double hopper speed, of course, we are using the dropper, but we also have to input the items into the dropper at the same speed. So to do that, we, we don't have uh, the same number of faces of the crafter uh, being occupied for, because for example, for this crafter, we need four uh, different ingredients and we have six faces in total in a block, right? So in this crafter, we're already using four for each of the ingredient and then one to, to get all the items out and then another one to power it. So yeah, we basically need uh, to use the, the dropper just to spend one of those faces and not two. And then from the dropper, we can spend however many faces we want. In this case, just two. As you can see with this one and two drop, uh, hoppers facing into the dropper and uh, pulling items from this large chest. Every single other ingredient is pulled out at single hopper speed. Hopefully that was clear. It's a lot of things to take into account. Uh, I did my best to, to explain it. Hopefully you understand it, and of course I'm available for questions down in the comments. The next crafter is the crafter of dispensers. As I said, my favorite one because they are a hassle to craft. So if we power it up, you can see that we are crafting dispensers in a perfect way. Now you can already notice that this is a bit slower than the pistons one because we need seven cobblestone to be input, so seven of the same ingredient to be input into this crafter. The other two ingredients are redstone dust and the non-stackable bows. And we are getting dispensers. Let's turn it up. So we have our basic clock here. We have our two observers facing uh, opposite directions and instead of node blocks, instead uh, we are using rails in this case. We are transmitting this, this signal to several uh, places. First one is with this observer to this 
repeater right here. And then from that observer to this observer right here that is powering double speed this uh, cobblestone dropper, uh, so we are inputting cobblestone at double hopper speed from that side. And then, yeah, into the dropper we are inputting the cobblestone with, of course, double hopper speed with these two hoppers facing into it. Uh, okay, yep. Sorry, it's it's been a while since I built this. <laughs> I need a second to figure it out. Uh, so we are saving on a lot of phases, as you can see, for that crafter. That allows us to um, to use those phases for other things. For example, we have a observer there, which we are using to power to hard power that crafter uh, block there. Why are we hard powering it? Because we need to power the other crafter here that is crafting uh, bows at the same exact tick. Why? Well, we have this thing here. So prevent, pretend this dropper is the other crafter, the one that crafts the bows. And this one is the dispenser. Um, if we were to remove that bow, since we have hoppers here inputting items into the dropper, you can see that that uh, same slot would be occupied by redstone instead of the bow. We don't want that to happen. Which means that on the same tick that we retrieve that bow, we have to put another one in. So to do that, we need update order. And the cool thing about update order when you hard power a block is that it's very predictable. So you hard power that block, which means that it gets updated first. And then the, the block adja adjacent to it, it's getting soft power. So the update uh, arrives late or after the first block. Which means that on the same tick, we output one dispenser, which removes that bow from there. And then also we are putting another bow there after that one has gone out, but on the same tick. It's hard to explain, but it is what's happening, right? So we output one dispenser and we already have another bow inside of there. And the redstone doesn't have time to occupy that spot because the redstone comes in the tick after. Nice, right? Technical stuff is very interesting. Uh, so that's why that's how we are solving the non-stackable problem. Um, another another mechanic that we're using is of course the copper bulbs. I've already explained that one. Uh, one that I forgot to explain on the the previous one and on that one is that the crafter of course drops the item. And since we have a little bit of less space down here to catch that item with a barrel, as we do in all of the other contraptions. By the way, this barrel in some contraptions is super important, so do not remove it if you want to get the items out of there. You can basically use a hover minecart if you want. Um, but yeah, to, to, to catch the items from the crafter that is dropping the items, we are using a, a hover below this comparator and then into this barrel. And the same we're doing here, we have a hopper below that repeater right there that catches the item from that crafter up there. And the final mechanic that I want to show you from this one is, of course, the triple pulse generator. We, also, we already saw this design, but we need a second one on this one. And I decided to change the design just because of compaction's sake. This design is super cool. So it uses a... A not so known mechanic that if you pulse the redstone line, it basically has a delay before it turns off. So for example, if we put a dropper here, we gave a single pulse with these observers, but we get out two pulses because of the two, uh, two tick delay that that redstone lamp has. Uh, and we're using that as our three tick or three poles generator. So we have, for example, our crafter up here and it's getting powered by this solid block and that solid block. This solid block is getting powered by the main poles that we are giving it with this observer. Uh, it also powers that lamp. So a few ticks after, we also get two, uh, two pulses in that solid block. So in total, we get three pulses right away. Pretty cool stuff, I think. Pretty cool stuff. And for the last contraption that I'm going to show, well, the last of those contraptions that I'm going to show in this video, I decided the one that crafts powered rails. This one is a fast one because every single time that the crafter pulses, we are powering six rails at a time. 
uh, that's another thing that you have to consider when using crafters how much output you get and that limits your speed for other crafting recipes or um, or increase it um, so in this one we need six iron ingots or gold ingots sorry as you can see it's perfect speed and the way we're doing it is by using three of those droppers at double hover speed as you can see here so our clock is embedded in this in this part here and we are using that dropper as our as our uh, update spreader basically so if we do this and replace that you can see we have we get the same clock but with droppers so we're doing something similar here and we're using this dropper as our update and then this rail and we are quasi connectivity power in that dropper and we are updating it with the same rail so that's pretty cool then we are uh, transporting the signal with this slope rail now this is the one that I have doubts if it's locational or directional because I tried at some point to make the same clock let's do, let's do rails To make the same clock and then get the the speed different with the with the repeaters, but it not it doesn't always work. So if we pair that and then turn it on, okay, it works here, but it doesn't always work, especially if I'm transmitting the signal and I'm not taking the the, the repeater signal from directly uh, out of the clock. And here we are transmitting the signal with a uh, this slow rail and then into the repeater. So for this, uh, for some reason in this one it works, and also in all of these ones that we would do, that we use that same mechanic. But I'm pretty sure sometimes it doesn't, and I'm not sure why. So if you notice some problems, please let me know down in the comments so that I can take it into account and modify the design. And we're also counting the ticks and pulses because we need uh, these crafters to power at different speeds. And we're using, of course, the copper bulbs. Then we are using a a piston here to transport the poles of the comparator down there upward on the same exact block or block column I guess so that we can power this crafter here at the top and we don't go out of the of the layout that we already have and finally here the barrel is a crucial part of the contraption because this crafter is outputting the things into the barrel oh look how many rails we have already in this short amount of time that we had it uh, turned on so this observer is hard power in the barrel which is soft power in the crafter which means that we needed to power that crafter because we ran out of available faces for this crafter just because of the amount of ingredients that it needs and the, the speed that we wanted to achieve. So we need of course the six uh, uh, gold ingots which we are using three droppers, three double hopper speed droppers which means three of the crafter uh, faces, we, we have three available still we're using one for the crafter of six, so two available and then we are using the one of the last two availables for the redstone dust which is this one right here with hopper speed and then we just have one face available but we still need to to power the crafter and to retrieve the items so we are using that same face for both of the things and yeah that's it i'm using posters here just to cover those hoppers that are um that are open on the on the top uh limiting lag it's not really it's not too much lag but yeah that's it for the redstone contraptions uh, if you if you go and check them out and you you study them you can notice that we are using the same mechanics for all of them just in different ways but it's the same mechanics so if you learn them and you practice it you can basically come up with your own crafter contraptions very easily and finally guys since this video is already quite long i want to show you these two contraptions so this one is one that crafts things that only require one ingredient in one single a slot like buttons so we're getting buttons here super quickly for example we could use it for ironing goods
we could use it for emeralds, redstone dust, anything that needs to be uncompacted, right? It also works for those recipes that uh, require more ingredients but cannot uh, craft other things in the process. A good example is slime blocks. Slime balls cannot craft anything until the whole crafting grid is full of slime blocks. And since we are powering the crafter constantly, once it hits the 9, it's gonna craft a slime block. And finally, the universal crafter. This one can handle every single item in the game, and it is very slow, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, now I'm working on a, on a proper universal crafter that will go super high speed and will handle shulker boxes, but for the casual player, this is fine. This is a proper design, I'm sure it doesn't have any trouble with directionality, locationality, or anything like that because it uses so simple redstone that it shouldn't fail in any way. Uh, as you can see, it's just uh, droppers facing into hoppers. These hoppers are facing all into each other. And finally, into this crafter block right here. We're also using another crafter with all of the slots locked down here. And we can basically program this crafter depending on the recipe we want. For example, if we were to use the 9 uh, slot grid, then we leave it open. If we were to craft repeaters, we would be doing something like this, compressors, something like that. And yeah, it depends on the recipe, but you can program the crafter to your needs. Then you put your ingredients in order, starting from the first slot to the ninth slot of the crafting uh, grid within this, inside of these uh, chests. You turn the lever on and you're, you'll start crafting. Let's see it in action, we're gonna craft beacons. And we can start placing the ingredients. So first ingredient is of course glass, second ingredient, glass, third ingredient, glass, fourth ingredient, glass, uh, fifth ingredient is another star, sixth ingredient is glass, and then three obsidian at the bottom, like so. And once we have all of our ingredients inside of those, as you can see, the, the chest is empty, the crafter is empty, we can flick the lever, and we start getting all of the items in order inside of this crafter. Once it reaches the, the, the signal string 9, it sends a pulse, and it's completely silent, which is a big thing. <laughs> and yeah, we get all of the beacons crafted eventually. Okay, I've sped the, the game a little bit. We have two ingredients left on each of these droppers uh, to craft. So we're gonna wait, and as you can see, the last ingredients are coming. We get the last trigger. We get one last trigger that is not silent because it detects that it's empty, basically. And the whole thing stops. So that's another good thing. Of course, to turn it on again, you have to turn it off and then turn it on <laughs> whenever you have the ingredients. But this is how you turn it off. You basically power the lever there. And as you can see, we'll have all of our beacons crafted. So it's pretty neat. It's not too big, um, not too expensive either. You just need a few repeaters, a few patchers, some observers, droppers, hoppers, and chests. And one notebook. <laughs> So anyways guys, that's all for today, hopefully you liked the video, it was a long one, I know I had to explain a few of the tricks and tips that I used for designing this, so that you can design your own if you want to. Of course, this very world is gonna be available as a world download down in the description, uh, without those things and with this thing reset so that you can play with the contraptions yourself and see how to build them and copy them if you, in your world if you want to. And yeah, let me know down in the comments if you liked the video, what do you like about it, what are your uh, ideas for the new crafter block, and maybe questions, comments, suggestions, whatever you want to leave down there. Like the video if you did like, uh, well, the video. <laughs> and subscribe if you haven't done so and if you so desire to watch more content like this thank you so much for watching guys this has been Giorgio and i'll see you in the next one goodbye